Hi, this is Vicki Gilforth Parnell, and I have come to share another dream that the Lord has given me. Um, and I want to specify, this is a dream, and I can only share what I see and what the Lord will allow. So please, pray about what I present to you, and take all your questions and all to the Lord in prayer. This was a dream that I received first on 11 8 and then again on 11 9 I actually dreamed it twice on 11 8 um, It is called the Coronation Dream. Today... Today is 11 14 yes 11 14 22 so again I'm asking you to pray about this there is a vision that I had on the 11th right after this dream that goes with it Lord willing I will have that ready um, very shortly according to how he wants to do it still praying about what I can share okay so please pray with me Holy Spirit lead me on how to pray Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I give you praise for you are good in all things. And you are the revealer of secrets. God, you are the God that gives dreams and revelation. God, you said that in the last days you would pour out your spirit. Young men would dream dreams and the, the young men would dream dreams and the old men would dream visions and the old men would dream dreams. Sorry about that. Lord Jesus, forgive me. That's an Amos and that's an Acts. Lord, I I ask that you send this dream forth and you let every person hear it that needs to hear it. You give them ears to hear the truth and remove all muffles. Give their eyes to see your truth with discernment and remove any scales, any veils that's covering them and, and trying to hide their understanding. Lord, I pray for clarity and discernment to be go forth in this dream. And Lord, I pray that each person would take and line it up with your word seek you for confirmation god seek you for what i'm saying lord and lord i pray in jesus name if this is not from you lord then shut me down because i do not want to speak a word in your name ever again lord ever again lord it's so easy at times to say things that we have to repent of lord god you're merciful and you're kind i thank you for that lord I mean, you get, we give account for every idle word we speak. Even a casual joke, Lord. That We give account for that, God. Let us take seriously that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I stand now on your word in Isaiah 54, 17 and Matthew 18, 18. That says, Lord, that anything that we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That we can condemn these things. That is a heritage that we have. So Lord in, that rises against us in judgment. So Lord in the name of Jesus. In your precious all powerful holy name. I plead your blood over this stream. And send it forth. I plead your blood over the internet. I plead your blood over the connections and the ports. Over everything and the people receiving it Lord. And over the video sites Lord the channels. So that all things will be heard clearly. Pristine clearly Lord. In Jesus name. And I bind every force from hell. That has set an assignment against me. Or against your words from coming forth. I bind them. I wrap them in everlasting chains. And in Jesus name I pike them. I break their teeth and their jaws. I crush their heads Lord. In Jesus name. And I cast them upon the seat of Satan's throne. At COP 27 Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, Father God, again, every plot, every gin, every snare, every device, every scheme, every schematic, every command, every keystroke, every email, every text that has been sent, every letter against me or against those that you love, those that are truly yours, Lord, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Every vex, every hex, every curse, Lord, every sorcerer, every witchcraft, every wicked, Lord, every voodoo spirit, every voodoo Lord God, I come against it. It's null and void. It has no power over me. I am blood-bought, blood-covered, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And I am an overcomer by the word of my testimony and by your blood. That is all-powerful. Your blood is alive. Your blood contains you, Jesus. You are alive. Your blood is alive. And it's all-powerful, too. So I thank you, Lord. 
And I pray that your perfect will be done on earth as in heaven. And Lord, I pray that more warriors, more children will rise up and reveal the plots and plans of the enemy without fear. Because we're not to fear what man can do unto us, but we are to fear you with a holy, godly, reverent fear. Because you are Lord of law, Lord, and sits on the throne, ruling heaven and earth. In Jesus' name. Okay, this dream is called the Coronation Dream. I dreamed it twice on 11 8 uh, 22 and again on 11 9 22 and today again is 11 14 22 and I was praying about whether to release this or not bear with me just a moment thank you Lord for the water Lord, I plead your blood over my throat too so Jesus my love I laid down to take a nap because I had become overwhelmed with tiredness I dreamed again and I lined it up with your holy word, 2 Corinthians 13, 1, whose last part says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall a word be established. I dreamed this night, the night before, but not, I dreamed this twice the night before, but not in its entirety. Today I dreamed it again, but with more details. So, sweet Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, According to John 14:26 and 1 John 2:27, bring this dream fully to my remembrance or remove it if for some reason it is not from God. This is the dream. I found myself sitting I found myself inside a very large meeting hall, a room, a gathering place for people all richly and finely dressed in their finest attire. It's people, it's people of every nationality and of every color. All of them are standing, some with beautiful stemmed glasses of alcoholic drinks in their hands. They are here for a celebration of sorts, I know, in this dream. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excitement was in the room as I observed this grand room filled with so many people. But I couldn't help but notice I felt uncomfortable like as if they knew my presence was here in this dream and they saw me observing them it would not go well for me if they caught me i heard pleasantries being exchanged by some but most are talking excitedly in hushed tones all throughout the room about this soon to see upcoming event there are celebrities here there are powerful men and women of the business world here I see high-ranking officials of governments and some military personnel as well. I knew all this in this dream. I saw many people. Some I knew and some I did not. And upon searching on the internet through the Holy Spirit's lead, I have identified some who I am to share, but didn't know their names. I will only share those names I have been led to. There is a Kathleen Kennedy who is a producer with her husband, I'm assuming, whose name is Frank Marshall, who is also a movie producer. There are other producers here as well. I saw a Harvey Weinstein, a Brian Gazer, a Peter Jackson, a Jerry Buckheimer, and a Steven Spiel Spielberg. Excuse me. Among the celebrities, I saw actor Johnny Depp, actor Tom Hanks, actress Julia Roberts, actor George Clooney, actress Drew Barrymore, actor Al Pacino, and actress Angelina Jolie, to name a few. Again, this is what I'm seeing in my dream. Bear with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is a wide variety and assortment of people here, all in their finest clothes. I saw the powerful George Soros, Soros, not sure how to say his name, S-O-R-O-S, there's King Charles and Camilla, his wife. Lord Jesus, there's so many other other people here. Isn't that Bill Gates talking to Angela Merkel from the Germany that I have seen in other dreams you have given me before, sweet Jesus? I see the Pope, Pope Francis. To the right of him, huddled in a group, is Elon Musk, talking to two men I have identified on the internet as Antonio Guterres of the United Nations and a Jean-Claude Juckner from the European nations. I look around and I see the Khomeini from Iran and Arabs, President 
Erdogan, Erdogan from Turkey. I see a group of people huddled together with a bubble over their heads with black block letters that reads, The Rothschilds. They're sipping their expensive liquors and wines while they wait for this grand celebration to begin. As my eyes pass through the crowds, I spot Mike Pence and wife Karen, in addition to Michelle Obama. But where is Barack Obama? There's Hillary Clinton and Bill huddled in the circle, with them talking as if they were best friends. There's a man with a bubble with the name over his head of Robert Mueller. I'm not sure who he is or why he's important. I see another cluster of men and women together with another bubble over their heads. That says in black block letters, Supreme Court Justices. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the water. I'm okay. I had to look up their pictures on the internet. The only ones I, the ones I saw are a uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, who is a black lady, a white man named Samuel Alito, another white man named John Robert, and a Spanish or Mexican looking lady named Sonia Soto Major. Again, I was not familiar with who they are in reality. I just saw their faces. To the right of this group, I saw a regally dressed woman who has a bubble over her head that says, Queen Margaret II. I recognize the man she's talking to as former Prime Minister of the UK, Boris Johnson. Also talking with them is Prince William and his wife, Catherine. Now I'm seeing another actor. His name is Tom Cruise, and he's mingling among people, including a black man whose bubble says King Mohammed VI. So many, many people here. Lord Jesus, what is going on here? As I looked further into the crowd, I see another group of people talking amongst themselves with the bubble over their heads saying, Rockefellers. The funny thing is, in this dream, I know some of them have already been officially declared dead, but here they are. The Rockefellers are talking to three men that I have identified by the internet as all tycoons. Oil tycoons, uh, as all tycoons, George Kaiser, who is a white older man with graying hair and clean shaven, a Russian white male who's middle aged and also clean shaven, named German Khan, and the last man is also another oil tycoon from Russia named Vajit Alekperov, V A G I T A L E K P E R O V. Upon closer observation of the people in this grand hall, this gathering, I recognized all these people have attached to their clothing a little device which I recognized as a universal transmitter from other dreams and visions. I begin to wonder who's not here for this grand event, because I see men from Saudi Arabia with their chic type headdresses and formal attire, and lo and behold, there's Janet Jackson too. What is this Jesus, my love? I asked questioningly. Why are all these people here from all walks of life? Even those thought dead and those who we believe are supposed to be enemies of one another. Lord, I even see Donald J. Trump and his wife Melania, their son Baron Trump and Donald Trump Jr. There's also Ivanka, Donald Trump's daughter and her husband in tow. I asked the Lord again, Jesus, my love, what does this mean? I looked around one more time, and I see Hunter Biden and Vladimir Putin. Jesus, my love, Jesus, what does all this mean? Why are all these people here? I'm still feeling very uncomfortable and uneasy. Still, I heard no answer from my lovely Jesus. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. I heard a noise to my right, and I turned to see double doors. The doors are being opened. Now standing in front of them are two very tall people. They are giants. Nephilim. I know in this dream. The one is a Nephilim Serena. I have seen in the past. 
in prior dreams, not including visions, and she was working in the sprawling underground hidden facility beneath the United Nations uh, United Nations building where she held a position of high power and authority there. She has her fiery red hair pulled, put up in an elaborate coiffed hairdo. She is wearing a slinky, sparkly, solid black dress with a split on the front side, exposing her muscular-shaped leg and black, strappy, high heel shoes. The top of the dress has diamond spaghetti straps. Adorning her neck is a large diamond necklace with matching earrings hanging from her earlobes. Accompanying her is a giant of a man that I haven't seen before. He is taller than Serena by about a foot, with black straight shoulder-length hair that flips out slightly at the ends. He is olive in his complexion color. He is dressed in a luxurious black tuxedo with a matching black cummerbund spanning his waist. His shirt is white with little rows of ruffles running up and down the front of his shirt. He has a small black bow tie around the expanse of his thick neck. These giant's clothes had to be custom made, I felt, because of their larger size. The crowd upon seeing them, with the doors opened, hushed immediately. You could have dropped a straight pin on the tile floor, and it would have sounded like a boulder crashing so quiet had the room become. I don't like this, I whispered to myself. Jesus, my love, where are you? I don't think I want to be here any longer. Warrior daughter, my little daughter, I have not left you. I am here with you. Watch, daughter, look with eyes of discernment. Listen, for you must need share. What you see here, what parts I tell you. Oh, Jesus, I'm so thankful and grateful to hear your sweet voice, my love. I will do all you have told me to do in your name and with Holy Spirit, my friend's help. Yes, daughter, you will. I heard the dark-haired giant say to the crowd, It's time for the ceremony. You are to follow us. Each of you have been permitted for your loyalty. It is an honor to see the king crowned. Low murmurs of agreement and excitement could be heard across the crowded, elegant room. I watched as the two Nephilim giants continued to hold open wide the double doors to the adjoining room. The people began eagerly moving into the room quickly, but slow enough as if not to shove one another. After the last person enters, I watched Serena and the black-haired man enter and close the doors behind them. I hear a clicking sound and know the door is locked from the inside, permitting no one else to enter. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord, for the water. Immediately afterwards, I see armed guards filling the room dressed in black suits. Two stations themselves in front of the double doors the people just had went into while the others guarded the other doors. Odd, I thought. I don't see any windows in this room. Daughter, I heard my lovely Jesus say, and I realized I needed to follow the people. I passed through the guards and doors with these, but I was speaking the name of Jesus and pleading his blood over me the whole time. I entered the room to find it covered in a red glow. The people are standing and waiting for something to happen. I looked to the left and I saw a picture on the wall. It's drawn, it's a drawn sun with the top half in a gold harvest, a harvest gold color, including its rays, and the bottom half is in a bluish teal color. Even the rays are the same color, but the ends of them in one way looks like hands, but another way they look like snake heads. I know this design. It is a logo picture for the COP27 meeting for supposed climate change for our world. A meeting of rulers and leaders under the guise of peace. This can't be good, I thought. I muttered to myself under my breath. I knew it was bad when I saw these people with their giant friends. Jesus help me, I prayed for the hairs on the back of my neck had started to stand up. Danger, danger, I feel it. 
I looked around quickly and then I noticed on the platform, or stage it could also be called, something is rising from the center of it. It's, almost, it's another raised platform with stairs on each of it. But it's not, that's not what grabbed my attention the most. Atop of the rising stage with stairs is a gold, gaudy, decorated throne with solid red blood cushions padding the back and the seat parts of it. There upon the throne sits a lone figure, a man. He is dressed in the finest of black, elegant, luxurious evening attire, except his shirt is blood red in color instead of the most common pristine white. He wears no tie of any sort. I heard myself gasp out loud. There, covering this man's face, is a mask of a very evil-looking horned goat with an upside-down pentagram inside an upside-down pyramid on his forehead. The man has both of his arms resting upon the armrest of the throne and seemed as thrown and seemed at perfect ease, even with the mask upon his face. He says nothing and moves not the least bit. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord, for the water. I heard a voice begin speaking to my left, but I couldn't see anything to identify him except a blood-red robe and a matching red beanie-type hat on the back of his head. Behold, your king, our master of the world, our new world, our time is now. His time is now. Murmurs of approval went through the crowd. I think I'm going to be sick. I heard another noise, but this time it was from my right. I can feel my mouth drop open in surprise. There coming up the steps on the right is a black woman dressed in a very tight, stretchy white pantsuit that makes it clear this is no woman. It is a man dressed as one. He has his face heavily painted like a lady's with long, fake eyelashes. He is wearing a dark, long woman's wig and is carrying a pillow in his hands. On top of the red silk pillow sits a golden crown with many points whose shape reminds me of a half sun. The man dressed as a woman prances seductively up the steps. He then walks toward the man with the goat's head sitting on the throne. He stops just to the right of the man's left leg. My mouth drops open again. I see his face. It is Barack Obama. Suddenly the room fills with an almost fearful atmosphere. People begin bowing their heads reverently. I want to throw up as I plead the blood of Jesus over myself once again. I see a shadowy figure appear out of nowhere on the man's right side where he's sitting. So it's my left side facing the stage. All of a sudden, the shadowy figure turns into a dazzling, beautiful figure of a man that shines with a light, yet I know it's not a true light. It's dulled somehow. Jesus, Jesus, that's Satan turning into an angel of life, light, isn't it? I ask in a whisper, then continue. What are they doing here? Is this going on during the COP27 meeting? Is that who I think it is sitting on the throne with the goat's head on? Is that Antichrist? Yes, it is, my daughter of faith. It is him. And yes, my love. Many things will happen during this gathering of leaders that most people do not realize, with many not even caring. I see the lighted figure of the man who I believe is Satan himself pick up the golden crown with the many points. He turns to the man with the horned goat's head mask still on and speaks in the most seductive voice I have ever heard. My son, my chosen one, the true savior of this world. Then he places the crown upon the head of the man sitting on the throne between the goat's horns of the mask. I have never been so thankful that at this moment for Jesus' blood covering and protecting me. His voice didn't draw me under his spell as it seemed to do everyone else. 
The lighted figure of the man backed up, turned back into the shadowy figure, then disappeared. The crowd was mesmerized. I heard the man in the red robe cry out loud, Behold our king! Let our new world begin! Cheers went up with much applaud. Jesus, does this mean the tribulation has begun? How is this possible if Antichrist is crowned ruler and king of our world in the shadows of the underground and not above in the eye of all the world? He has given power to rule for seven years according to your holy scriptures. Yes, daughter, he is. He will rule for seven years, but nowhere in my holy word does it say that the tribulation is only for a total of seven years alone. These seven years spoke of in the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation concerns the man of sin's allotted time in the trying and tribulation time set aside for your whole world as my judgment hand, judgment's hand falls hard and swift, but is not the full day's in count of the whole tribulation period spoken in my holy word. Know this, daughter, the man of sin is soon to become the leader of your world above ground too. But privately, those in power, those of fame, and those in leadership have already pledged their souls and allegiance to Antichrist this night. Then I woke. Excuse me. Here are the verses the Lord gave me. Excuse me. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen. Daniel eleven twenty one and 36 through 37 first chronicles 28 9 proverbs 15 3 job 28 24 jeremiah 23 24 jeremiah 16 17 first timothy 4 1 john 3 19 through 20 mark 4 21 Acts 2 17 Numbers 12 6 and Job 33 14 through 16 and here are some of the bullet points that I prayed about and the Lord showed me okay number one I felt the coronation ceremony of Antichrist is being held underground and in or near Egypt Number two, I knew going into this dream that most of the people attending had traveled secretly for this crowning of their king of the new world, Antichrist. Number three, Jesus had confirmed what I felt that this coronation is during the COP27 meetings held between the 8th through the 18th of November. So this is going on right now. Number four, this was the actual coronation of Antichrist in which those in power, in positions of fame and the elite of our world, will gather and pledge their allegiance and sell fully their souls to Satan and the Antichrist, giving them their full support. The public coronation of this man, number five, of sin is soon to follow upon our world in which now there will be little or no resistance as most in power or positions of authority will have pledged allegiance to him in advance. Number six, Satan himself crowned the man in the goat head mask, showing to all this is indeed his chosen man of sin. This is Antichrist, his son to speak, so to speak. Seven, Barack Obama dressed as a woman, a transgender is symbolic of how far our world has fallen into sin. Because man laying with a man and womankind laying with another woman is an abomination, as we're told in Leviticus 18, 22-23. This lifestyle is further condemned in Romans 1, 26-28, and it is sin. You're to hate the sin, but love the person. Number 8. The transgender-dressed Barack Obama also is symbolic of the final stages of our world's moral decline and corruption and brings judgment upon those nations that justifies it. 9. The horned goat's head is the foremost symbol of Satanism since the founding of the Satanic Church in 1966 and is also called Baphomet. 
if I said that right. Number 10. The upside down pentagram on the forehead and between the eyes of the goat's head is a symbol known for conjuring strong demons. 11. Every time I pray about the COP27 logo, I hear the name Ra. Through research, I was led to find Ra, and he is the ancient deity of the sun worshipped by the Egyptians and was identified primarily with the noonday sun. 12. The sun god Ra ruled in parts of the created world, the sky, the earth, and the underworld. Number 13. In some ways, Ra is symbolic of the power any Christ shall have as ruler of our world when he's fully possessed to rule over our world. 14. The COP27 meeting meetings are being held in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt this year again, making a connection with the sun god Ra. 15. If Antichrist is crowned officially below the ground, but not officially above ground yet, then when we still expect that is no lo- then we can still expect that it's no longer safe for we Christians anymore except for Jesus protecting us. We can expect all persecution against us to intensify, intensify greatly. Antichrist's hatred is not just for me, but for all God's true little children. Also, another note, the crown, sun shape, also reminded me of Ra, and it also reminded me of the logo, the COP27 logo, the crown that he had. Also, on 1-11-22 at 23 while praying, I had a vision of this coronation ceremony in great detail of the ceremony itself. Lord willing, I will be sharing it shortly also, so please be praying about it now and for Holy Spirit to reveal the truth of all these things in Jesus' name to you. Again, that's what I can share of this dream. And I did have it three times, the first two times in part, the third time It was the ending, more the ending. So I ask that you lay this before the Lord. Pray about it. There are many things that happen in these so-called world meetings. We as Christians need to be aware of. We need to be praying. We need to ask the Lord to reveal to us. Ask the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. How do we need to pray about these things? Is there anything hidden we need to pray about? How can we stop it? Precision prayer. Precision prayer. Precision prayer. This is... Um, Tennessee signing off Vicki Gilford Parnell stay under the blood I'm praying for you everyone God bless